All right, so here we are. We're going to look at starting some problems so that we get an idea of how this really works for us. And where's the pen? Oh, there's the pen. And we're going to start with this right here. And we're on page 362 of the book. And since you have the book, you can just read along with me. And I, I will be Austin. I know, that's so nice of me. I will be Austin. Okay, so we're on page 362, and we're going to start with number three. I don't know if you can see me or not. You know what? I really don't care. Okay, so here we go. Number three, homes. <laughs> homes. Real estate ads suggest that 64% of homes for sale have garages. 21% have swimming pools and 17% have both features. What is the probability that a home for sale has? And then we're going to look from there. Now, I've got a Venn diagram. I've got two different variables going on here. Uh, here is my sample space or my universe here in, in, in the rectangle. And I've got two variables talking about homes for sale. Either they have a garage or they have a pool. So what I'm going to do, and we're going to go to red, I'm going to label one of these circles as being those houses that have garages and the other circle is going to be those houses that have pools. Now, those houses that have garages, 64%. Here's the problem that we're going to face though. If I take this 64 and I put it right there, if someone is looking at this graph besides me who is writing this, and you know, someone's going to be looking at this graph beside you, that would be me, the greater, okay? I'm going to look at this and say, okay, what does this 64% represent? Does it represent the entire circle, or because it's on this side, does it represent this two-third moon section? So that's going to be a confusing issue. So what we're going to do, when we're talking about the entire circle, we will label that 0.64 saying, just like this circle is G, this circle is 64%. That works really well. Okay, now, 21% of the homes have pool, and I can mark that 0.21 down here, representing the entire circle. And then the other piece of information from this is that 17% have both, and that would be where these two circles intersect. And I can put that 0.17 there because it is simply, there's no confusion. It's this part right here. Okay, fine. Now I've got this information. And I've got my circles labeled well. So part A says, what's the probability that a home for sale has a pool or a garage? All right, so I'm going to write this like this. Probability that it has a pool or a garage. Or porg. And if we switch them, it'd be corp. All right, so what's the probability of a pool or a garage? Now, that's an or statement, which means we could look at it like this. The probability of A or B. And the general addition rule is this. Probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability, whoops, that doesn't work. Let's do this real quick, plus the probability of B, and then every time we add, we have to ask ourselves, do these groups intersect? And the answer is they do. So I would subtract off that intersection, the probability of A and B. Specifically here, this would be, it would be the probability of a pool, which is, and I'm going to do this down here, 0.21, plus the probability of a garage, which would be 0.64, minus the intersection of these groups because they intersect, and those would be the houses that have both the probability of pool and a garage, minus 0.17. So 0.21 plus 0.64 is going to be 0.85 minus 0.17, and that is going to give us a value of 0.68. So there's our answer. Now, thinking about this, what this means is I could be in this circle, or I could be in this circle, or I could be here in both of them. And, and really, what question is that asking? <coughs> Excuse me. That's an at least one. You could have at least this, or at least that, or you could have both. That's an at least one question. What's the probability of having at least one of these two items? Okay, question B says, neither a pool nor a garage. So what's neither a pool nor a garage? Well, that would be outside the circles. Okay, that's fine. And we just said this is at least one. And at least one is what? It's the complement of none. Okay? So since it's going to be the complement of none, I would do 1 minus 
this statement right here, or 1 minus this value of 0.68. That would be the outside of the circle. 1 minus at least 1 is the complement of at least 1. So 1 minus 0.68 is going to be 0.32. And in order to find the area outside of the circles, that means I have to find the area inside the circles first with an OR statement. So 1 minus 0.68 is 0.32. And C says, a pool but no garage. What are we talking about when we're talking about a pool but no garage? Realistically, we're talking about being in the pool circle but not being in this part right here. So that means that we're talking about this three-quarter moon section right there. Oh, I color so well. All right, so what is that area? Well, that's this part of this circle. This part of this circle is 0.21. Well, no, let me rephrase. The whole circle is 0.21, but this part is 0.17. So how much is this? Well, it's going to be 0.21 minus 0.17, which is 0.04. But it's so much bigger than that section right there. I know. This diagram is not drawn to scale. All right. Let's see. Do we have time? We might just might. All right. So next question. Number five, amenities. A check of dorm rooms on a large college campus revealed that 38% had refrigerators, 52% had TVs, and 21% had both a refrigerator and a TV. Okay, so we, whoa, that's really big. I don't want that. I want a pen. TVs, refrigerators. We've got refrigerators. There you go, Mike. It's refrigerators. All right, so 52% had TVs, so this is point, oh, oh. This is 0.52, 38% had refrigerators, and 21% had both. So question A says, a TV but no refrigerator. So I'm looking at being in this circle, but not in this section, just this section. That's the three-quarter moon section over here. Okay, that three-quarter moon section right there is going to be 0.52 minus the 0.21, which is going to be 0.31. Okay, statement right there. Lovely. All right, B says, a TV or a refrigerator, but not both. Well, that would be this section of this circle, or you could be in this section of this circle, which means I've got this group right here. So, and or means and, so I could add this group and this group, and then I could ask myself, do they intersect? And, and uh, well, you know, probably not, because you're in here or you're in here. So if I've already got this, which is 0.31, and I find this one over here, part of the refrigerator circle, but not the intersection, which would be 0.38 minus 0.21, which is going to be 0.17. I take this value, the 0.38 we got here, plus the 0.17 we get from here, and we get 0.48 for that question right there. All right, so C. C says neither a TV nor a refrigerator. So let me get rid of some of this stuff here because we'll do that. All right, neither a TV nor a refrigerator. What does neither a TV or refrigerator mean? It means the outside of the circles. So how do I find the outside of the circles? Well, we did that last question. In order to find the outside, I have to find the inside. And the inside is the OR state and the probability of a TV or a refrigerator. All right, but I want the outside, so I want 1 minus that. What is this? This is going to be 1 minus the probability of a TV plus the probability of a refrigerator minus the probability of a TV and a refrigerator because they intersect. So I take 0.52 plus 0.3, these two circles. Do they intersect? Yes, they do. They intersect right there. Subtract that 0.21. 0.52 plus 0.3 is 0.9, minus 0.21 is 0.69, so this is 0.69, but that's not my final answer, Regis, because that is the inside of the circle, and what I want is I want the complement of that, I want the outside, so one minus that, my final answer is 0.31, and the timer beeps, and we're done. Shut up. And we move on from there.